Hi, in this video I'm going to show you some of my techniques for shooting in grey skies. We get a lot of grey skies so I'm going to go cover this in a bit more detail. I've made a video about it before which I'll link to at the end. But this is going to be a bit more of an in-depth look at what to do on these grey days. We get an awful lot of them in the UK, <laughs> over a hundred, so you've got to really know what you can do. I've come here tonight uh, to Goodrevy and there aren't any other photographers here, but there are our images to be found. So hopefully I'm going to show you and inspire you to be able to come out on grey days. A great subject for grey days are detail photographs. So I've just found these sand patterns on the beach here. I'm going to, I think this looks a bit like a tree. So I'm going to, I'm going to shoot this in vertical rather than horizontal. So I just found another nice sand pattern. Yeah, I like the way the lines are leading to that pebble. So uh, it's just a case of framing it upright so that all the lines lead nicely into the pebble. Another thing to photograph on grey days, rock patterns. They might not, not look like much from a distance, but once you start to frame them up, some of them look quite amazing and the colours, although subtle, can be really good. Great waves in this rock. Wonderful. Layers and layers. This is quite near the lighthouse at Goodrevy. Another great place to come on grey sky days, of course, is woodland because for a, lo a large period of the year the, the floor is covered with leaves. So even long after the, leaf the uh, leaves have fallen from the trees, they stay on the ground for several months. So you can get good shots here in grey sky days. And another favourite subject of mine is tree bark. I love photographing tree bark. They look great as a series or even on their own if, the, if it's fascinating enough. So there's plenty of opportunities for shooting detailed shots in woodland. And also um, it's another great place to, to try light painting. And obviously when you're shooting, shooting trees at night, it doesn't really matter whether the, the sky is gray or not. You don't really need the, the, uh, the stars to be showing. So lots of things to try in woodland as well. So I've just found some tree bark and I really like photographing tree bark. I've done it throughout my life. So I uh, managed to get some really good ones. One of the best places is, is to just go to an arboretum because then you get specimen trees. But I'm in Idlis Woods in Truro, Cornwall at the moment and it's mostly beech trees and I found a nice beech tree with uh, a little bit of ivy growing up it and a lot of moss all over it. So it looks pretty nice and it's got a nice sort of deep green tone to it. Another good thing to do on a grey sky day in woodland is to do some light painting. So best to come to the woodland at dusk so you can see where you're walking and wait for the light to fade. 
then start painting the trees with your torch light or flashlight. You can even use a headlight to do the same thing. See my other video on light painting. So the other thing you can try on grey sky days in woodland is ICM photography or intentional camera movement. So this scene doesn't look very promising at all. I've been here under much better light. It's so grey and flat tonight, there's absolutely no photographers other than me here as far as I can see. So it doesn't look that promising, but what might work is a long exposure. So uh, I'm going to try some long exposures which will smooth out the waves and might make for a more moody, slightly arty kind of black and white shot. So there's no colour, so it's, it's going to be converted to black and white. To do the long exposure shots, if you're a beginner, you, you just need to get somewhere at dusk or dawn when, when the light's really low. You have to have a tripod, obviously, because the, the shutter speed will be so much longer because it's darker. And you, you just want to leave the shutter open for about two seconds, four seconds, maybe 10 seconds, maybe even longer. Obviously, you can use a neutral density filter, also known as an ND filter which cuts down the amount of light reaching the camera anyway. So those first shots weren't bad, but I, it's better if you can get a nice foreground of some rocks with the waves crashing over them, then you get that really nice kind of misty sea effect. So I'm gonna give that a try. So I'm using a shutter speed of approximately 10 seconds now. Another good subject which suits grey days, black and white, are historical buildings. Buildings that are in ruins particularly look great. So things like this uh, classic tin mine down here in Cornwall look absolutely fine in black and white. Uh, I, I personally would prefer, you know, a, a, even with white fluffy clouds with some side lighting, obviously, in black and white that looks makes a lot, a lot more of a dynamic image because you've got bright whites and you've got deep blacks caused by the very hot contrasty sun but even on a day like this which is quite dull you can still get good black and white pictures and it's just great to be out here so i feel like <laughs> i feel like i've i've spent too many days of my life gloomily looking out and thinking oh a bit dismal when really I should be out here even if I even if I end up deleting the pictures it's good practice it's good air and it's good to have the uh, the sky above your head isn't it apparently you can get vitamin D generation which I, I obviously get a lot of it apparently you can get vitamin D even through the clouds because the infrared comes through the clouds so uh, Get out more, note to self. Another subject which looks good on grey days are people photographs, portraits, because the lighting is quite flat. So you, if, if you imagine a bright sunny day, you get dark shadows under your nose and things like that. It's not very complimentary. So uh, portraits can work pretty well on a, on a grey overcast kind of day like this. So I, I'm on my own here, so <laughs> it's going to have to be a self-portrait. But if, you, if you're not doing self-portraits, I, I urge you to do them because I've done hardly any over the years. But the ones I've done, I'm, I'm glad I did because I think I was a bit more reposer when I was younger. <laughs> so uh, I would... Uh, take pictures of myself trying to look cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't laugh. Uh, but now when I look back on them, you know, some of them were 30, 40 years ago. I'm just so glad that I took them because even if I look back and laugh, they're great, aren't they? So yeah, come out somewhere like this and pose away.
So I just came across these bulls in a field. Because it's a grey, kind of dank kind of day, and there's a bit of misty drizzle, which is known in Cornwall as mizzle in the air, it means that the, the black cows really stand out nicely against the background of trees, because the trees are obviously in a, a kind of hazy grey place. So not a great photo, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take it anyway. So you've just got to find a subject that suits black and white on a grey day. And I, I'm here at a cemetery and I'm going to take a picture of this cemetery sculpture, which is an angel looking over the grave. And really, it, it doesn't matter whether the sky behind it would, would have been blue or cloudy or whatever. Um, I think, in fact, the fact that it's a grey sky means that there's no detail in the sky. And therefore, the your attention is drawn straight to the subject, there's nothing distracting, no clouds or anything like that. So this kind of subject suits black and white well. Uh, it's, it's a kind of, it's slightly cliched subject because people have been photographing graveyard angels since the, I don't know, 1970s. There was a big craze in the 1980s, so you would see them on album covers by the likes of Joy Division and people like that, bands like that. I've always liked them, but I must admit, when everyone else was doing them in black and white, I was the one shooting them in colour because I just loved the colour of some of them. Uh, so, uh, and that did depend on the light, but today I don't think it matters that it's grey, overcast, dull light. This is a subject which suits black and white. So I'm here at Truro at dusk and it's completely grey flat sky but it doesn't matter at all because if you're shooting images at dusk and you use the daylight white balance setting the sky appears blue anyway. So photographing towns and or anywhere that's illuminated at night or at dusk is a really good way of um, making the sky appear blue and it's another thing you can do on a, on a grey flat lifeless sky day. So I'm going to get a shot now with my longer lens. So I've put my 100 to 400 mil lens on and this is the view at 100 mil. So I'll just get a shot lined up because that's pretty nice. Uh, oops, make sure it's level, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, this is a grey, flat, lifeless sky, but it still looks pretty good, doesn't it, even on the video camera. Yeah, keeping the main point of the cathedral on the third line. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. There's quite a lot of good colour. Yeah, so that's, that's two shots on a grey, flat, lifeless sky day. Right, nearly dark now, so time to go. I just got a shot of Gadrivi farmhouse with the long lens so uh, it's quite nice with the lights on nothing special but it just proves you can actually get shots on grey days so I hope you've enjoyed this video please consider subscribing because it costs me quite a lot of money all this driving around and hours and hours of video editing so I'd appreciate it if you just subscribe and if you've if you've been following my channel before <laughs> you'll know about me and wellies well my Wellingtons have actually split, so I was just walking through the sea. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. And they actually split on the top, so, so they're letting the sea in now, so uh, time to get a new pair of those as well. Oh well. Till next time, bye for now.